Hello everyone, I'm That Tech Guy. Windows 10 has been out for quite a while now, and in my opinion it is a huge improvement over Windows 8. So for those of you out there who use Linux, such as Ubuntu or Fedora or Mint or one of the other distributions, I would like to show you how you can set up a virtual machine and run Windows 10. So let's get started. Simply open up your favorite web browser and simply type in Windows 10 ISO into your search engine and it should be the first one that comes up, this Windows 10 ISO from Microsoft. So click on that and it will take you to their page for the Windows 10 ISO. So you'll scroll down to where it says Select Edition and on this drop down menu we're going to select Windows 10 and Confirm. It'll take just a moment for it to validate and then select your product language and because I'm in the United States I want English. And hit confirm again let it validate and then from here you can download your ISO. Um, you can choose between the 32-bit and the 64-bit you click on one and choose a location for it to save to. Now the ISO itself is roughly about four gigabytes in size so depending on your internet speed, that will affect how fast and how long it takes you to download. Um, it could take anywhere from 10 minutes to over an hour, depending on your connection. So please be aware of that. And once you've downloaded the ISO, you're also going to want for this tutorial, I'm using VirtualBox. Now VMware Player will work as well, and the um, setup is fairly similar. So feel free to use whichever um, software you like. I prefer VirtualBox when I want to run Windows on top of Linux and I don't need to do a whole lot of heavy graphical um, tasks. If you don't have it already, open up your browser again and you'll want to navigate to VirtualBox. It's one word. And from here we click on the first one that comes up the downloads at the Oracle VM VirtualBox. And because we're running Linux, we want the VirtualBox 5.0.6 for Linux hosts. And on this page, you'll select the one that matches up with your distribution. Now, right now, I'm running Ubuntu 15.4 Vivid. So it's up here at the top. And because I have a 64-bit processor, I want to select the AMD 64. If you have a 32-bit processor, select the i386. So go ahead and download that, and as similar as the ISO, choose a save location for it. It's not a very big file, so it won't take long to download at all. Once you've downloaded it, head to, back to the downloads page for VirtualBox, the one before this one, and under where it says VirtualBox 5.06, the extension pack, go ahead and grab the one for all supported platforms, and save that as well. So once you have those three, um, and you've run through the installer for VirtualBox, go ahead and fire it up. And this is the screen that you should be greeted with. So to begin with, we're going to want to create a new virtual machine. So to, to do that, simply click on New, and give it a name. I'll go ahead and just name it Windows 10. And as you can see, it recognized that name, so it already picked a version for me. And I think that I downloaded the 32. No, I have the 64-bit ISO. Be sure to select the one that matches whether you chose a 32-bit or the 64-bit, because if you select the wrong one here, it will not start up. So go ahead and make sure you verify that, and then click Next. And then choose how much memory you want to allocate for this virtual machine. I like to give my machines a little more than what's recommended, especially since I have so much to spare. So I'm going to give it about 4 gigs, roughly. Once you do that, select Next. And then here we can choose whether we want to create a virtual hard disk for this machine. If you want to save any documents, files, or applications, you'll want to create one. Um, for this tutorial, we'll just be creating a virtual one. 
You can use an existing virtual hard disk file. It's a little more advanced and beyond the scope of this video. So for now, we're just going to stick with the default options. So click Create. And go ahead and if this is your first time virtualizing, just go ahead and stick with the VDI VirtualBox disk image. Because again, the others are a little more advanced. And click Next. Here, you can choose whether you want to select a dynamically allocated hard disk, which will only use up space as you fill it up to the maximum size that you select, or a fixed size, which will take a little longer to create, but it's faster. Um, I never really know exact. Um, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of saving applications and pictures or anything on my virtual machine. Um, I don't need a whole lot of space, so I'm just going to go ahead and select the dynamically allocated and just let it fill up as I use it. So 32 gigs is what it's suggesting. For Windows, it's recommended that you have at least 8 gigs just for the operating system. Really, 15 would be the minimum that I personally would probably go. Um, and I have a t I have a two terabyte drive on this machine, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at. Th I'm going to go ahead and just bump it down to 25, because I don't really need that much space. Like I said, I'm not going to be saving anything on this. So depending on how you envision yourself using this virtual machine, um, select something that's appropriate to you, and once you get that adjusted, click on Create. And there we have it. it. As you can see, we now have our specifications for our new virtual computer. Um, but before we fire it up, we need to make a few changes. So go ahead and with this highlighted, either right click or and select settings or select settings up here at the top. And let's just change a few things. So just looking to the general tab, everything here looks okay. So come on down to system, and let's just make sure everything, under processor, under the processor tab, you can select how many processors you want to allocate to this machine. I have eight on this computer, so I'm just gonna go ahead, because it's Windows and it's a little more resource intensive than Linux, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it half. And we should be good with that under display. Um, you're going to want to slide the video memory all the way to the right and give it as much as you can. Um, things will just run better. And I prefer enabling 3D and 2D video acceleration. Then come under storage, and this is where we need to point this virtual machine to our Windows 10 ISO that we just downloaded. So under storage, on the empty disk image here, click on that. And then on the right, click on this little disk right here and choose Virtual Optical Disk File. And then navigate to where you saved your Windows 10 ISO. Um, by default, it should automatically just go to the Downloads folder unless you have changed to those settings. So go ahead and select that and click, op click Open. And then now we're pointed to the right ISO. And let's just check everything else and make sure we're good. And it looks like we are, so click OK. And now we are ready to fire up our Windows 10 machine. So with it highlighted, just simply click Start. And it will take a few moments for it to, to fire up. Um, depending on what kind of computer you have, it could be faster, it could be slower. So just be patient with it. And don't panic if it doesn't show up right away. So here we have our Windows setup screen, and so to begin we just click Next and Install Now. By default, VirtualBox will seamlessly capture your mouse between Linux and whatever virtual machine you're running, whether it's Windows or another Linux, so there's no switching back and forth. If you have a Windows 10 um, activation key, go ahead and enter it now. I don't plan to be keeping um, this particular virtual machine on my system, so I'm not going to add my key quite quite yet, because I'm not going to keep this one around. I have another one that I'll be using. 
So I'm going to click on Skip. And then select which one you wish to install, whether it's a Pro or the Home. I'm just going to stick with Pro. And then accept the license terms after reading them all extensively. And click Next. And click on Custom, Install Windows Only. And on this page you will see the virtual hard drive that you created on the previous steps for this machine. So as you can see there's my 25 gigabytes of unallocated space. We're good on that. So we can highlight that and click Next. And then we wait for Windows to install. It shouldn't take too, too long. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it here and I'll bring us back when this part is finished. This is a good time to go get yourself a cup of coffee, stretch your legs, because um, it'll take just a few minutes for it to go through this. So I'll be back. Okay, and once it finishes installing, it will restart itself and you'll be greeted with the Windows logo screen. And this stage will take a few minutes as it prepares itself for first time use. Um, so just be patient with it. It will take a few minutes to finish up this part. After the setup finishes and Windows restarts, if you did not enter the product key previously, you will be prompted to do so again. But as I said, I don't plan on keeping this one, so I'm going to just like do this later here at the bottom. And then I'm just going to stick with the Use Express settings, and it will restart again. And this part should not take as long as the other parts. Upon restarting, Windows 10 will prompt you over who owns this particular computer. I'm assuming that if you're virtualizing this, you're probably doing it at home. Now, it's very important that you choose the right one here because you cannot change this. It's real, well, you can, but it's really, really hard to do. So go ahead and click I own it if this is your home PC and click next. And on this page, you can choose to create a Microsoft account for you, which will remember all of your Windows settings and so on for when you sign into other Windows 10 devices. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and skip this step as well. Give it a minute to think about all these things. And then you can create a username and password. I don't want a password. Let's see. Yes, you don't have to have a password if you don't want one. So as you can see, it's fairly straightforward setting up. It's not hard at all. And then we get the welcome splash screen. It's going to tell us all the features of Windows 10. And it's going to set a few more things up. The majority of this whole virtualization setup process is just waiting for Windows to set up. Um, other than that, it's really easy to do, as you can see. And it doesn't take too long, but like I said, most of it is automated. So you only have to intervene here and there, which is nice. I like how streamlined everything is. And then after that, you are greeted with your Windows 10 desktop. By default, VirtualBox will automatically sync up your virtual machine internet with your host internet connection. So all of that should be taken care of. From here, you're pretty much ready to go. You can browse the internet. You can um, explore all the new features, the new start menu. We have Cortana down here. Uh, for those of you who missed my Windows 10 introduction video, which I will link, um, some of the cool features about Windows 10, of course, is you no longer have the Metro interface and the desktop interface. It's all just one big combined desktop interface. You still have the tiles that carry it over from Windows 8, but as you can see, they're part of the Start menu now. They don't switch to their own screen, which is nice. And with the Start menu, you can resize it. Um, if you want to get rid of a tile, you right-click and click Unpin from Start. You can move tiles around. You don't have to have any tiles if you don't want to, and getting rid of all the tiles will allow you to shrink it down to just these options right here. You can also make it as tall as you want. 
So it's very customizable, and I do appreciate that fact. I hated the Metro interface. So this is much nicer, much cleaner in my opinion. Right here you have Cortana. She's not set up yet, um, but if you would like to set her up, you can come here to the, well, just click on, click on Next and Agree. Give her a name, or give yourself a name for her to call you. So call me Tech Guy. Click Next. And so you can play around with this new personal assistant. And she doesn't take long to set up at all. But she will require you to have a Microsoft account. So if you don't have one of those, you will not be able to take advantage of Cortana's features. So do be aware of that. Your taskbar is pretty much the same as the last few versions of Windows. The biggest difference here is you now have a notification center or action center. And it will show you anytime you get system notifications, emails, and so forth. So if, any, if you ever see a pop-up um, for maybe a system update that is needed, but you miss it and it disappears, this is where it will go. So this is a good way, by virtualizing Windows, this is a good way to get a feel for the new operating system and to just play around with it and see if maybe it's something you would like to install on your main machine or even dual boot with Linux. The only other thing I would like to mention is a guest editions pack that we downloaded for VirtualBox. To install it, come up here to the top and select Devices and insert guest edition CD image. And then click on this pop-up box right here and run Windows or run VBox Windows Editions.exe to run the extension pack. Click yes. Next. Next. And install. And what this extension pack will do for you is it will allow you to full screen the virtual machine and it will just it will create a smoother experience for you when you virtualize these machines. So I prefer to just click always trust and install so I don't have to go through 10 different prompts. Let it execute and it doesn't take long and when it's done you'll have a better more streamlined experience with your virtual box machine. So in my opinion this is one of the first things I will always do um, whenever I start up a new machine because it just makes the experience that much better. Being able to resize the window and to not have these gray bars and make it whatever size you want is a big thing for me. So just click reboot, let it finish, let it restart, and upon restarting you will be able to resize it to however you want to fit it. So it's that simple. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to get Windows 10 virtualized up and running on a Ubuntu or Linux system. Um, if you found this video helpful and you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to my channel. If there is anything that I may have missed or any ideas or suggestions that you may have, please feel free to comment them below and I will try to respond to every comment. To turn off your machine when you're finished, you just shut it down like you would shut down a normal computer, coming down here to the start menu, power, and shut down. And that's it. So thank you for watching, and please like, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video.